It's time now for some business news with Stephen Carroll, our business editor, joining me here in the studio. Hello there. Hi, Catherine. And now we're going to be starting off with the G20 meeting over in China. The economy there, one of the main topics on the table, and the sign's not currently very good. No, and it's not a very good, I suppose, start to those discussions that they have so many warnings coming about slowing global growth. The International Monetary Fund, just before that G20 meeting got underway in China, saying they might have to cut their forecast again this year for what they expect the global economy to grow by. They've already cut it to 3.1% and there could be more bad news on the way. Um, now, growth in international trade also slowing down too, and that's important because that seemed to be a key driver of the economy globally. Uh, it's running at about 3% currently. It should, according to the OECD, be double that to try and make any sort of meaningful difference to international uh, growth. Now, we're not expecting any major agreement or major decisions to come out of the G20 uh, to try and boost that growth. We are expecting lots of talk about things like trade, trying to reduce protectionism, but also world leaders being more conscious of the fact that they have to try and sell the idea of globalisation to people in their own countries. This after the rise of uh, recent uh, populist movements in various uh, countries around the world. Uh, world leaders now know they have a bigger challenge ahead of them to try to tell people that trade is good for the economy, it does create jobs, and it is something that can help them in the future. Now, one of the things that uh, a lot of people around the world get really hot under the collar about is uh, tax havens. There's been a lot in the news recently about that, particularly here in Europe. Um, it looks like there has been some movement there in terms of the G20. And this is a topic the G20 is picking up on off their last meeting. Uh, according to the French Finance Ministry, the final G20 communicates the final, I suppose, decision that comes out of this meeting uh, will include uh, a promise to create a blacklist of tax havens around the world uh, and even uh, measures to punish them if they don't obey international tax taxation rules. Now, according to the French Finance Minister Michel Sapin, he said this will be a first and it'll be part of what we'll, uh, he's calling an effective and concrete battle uh, to cut tax evasion and tax avoidance. That list expects to be produced by July of next year. All right. Now, uh, one of the uh, news events that's seen as having had a big impact uh, and could still potentially have a big impact on the global economy is uh, the so-called Brexit uh, referendum result in the UK another big topic on the agenda at the G20 and there's been good and bad news relating to this for the British Prime Minister Theresa May. First the good news and that's progress being made in a potential trade agreement with Australia. Theresa May meeting her Australian counterpart Malcolm Turnbull in Hangzhou. Turnbull saying they've had discussions over what a free trade agreement may look like after Britain leaves the European Union. He added that Australia would support the UK in negotiating trade deals with other countries as well. And that support will be welcomed in London, particularly after another G20 partner, Japan, warned its companies may move their head offices out of the UK as a result of Brexit. Now, Japan's foreign ministry produced a detailed report on how Japanese companies should deal with the British exit from the European Union. Japanese companies currently provide around 140,000 jobs in Britain, so that advice being watched very closely. All right, more on the Brexit uh, coming up in our news bulletins later on in the programme. But uh, we'll move on for now with a look at how the markets are starting the week. Small gains on the open at the European markets uh, this Monday. Mining companies leading the gains. Uh, small gains, as you can see, across London, Paris and Frankfurt. Uh, but it is a week starting, at least, uh, in positive territory. Over in Asia, investors there are getting their chance to react to jobs data out of the United States on Friday. Job creation was lower than had been expected, but the markets are seeing that as good news because it means that there may be a chance the Federal Reserve will push back a planned rate cut that we had been expecting or had been speculating that could take place as early as September of this year. Gains across in London, power, uh, excuse me, in uh, across the board there in uh, Tokyo and the Hang Seng in Hong Kong and in Shanghai as well. All right, let's keep things Asian and move on to uh, one of my favourite topics at any time of day, uh, the humble cuppa of tea. Uh, a perhaps unexpected trend in a country that uh, famously has all the tea, uh, talking about China. Yes, exports of British tea to China are, believe it or not, on the rise. A number of factors seem to be behind this trend, including a growth in English-style tea rooms in China and also the popularity of TV series like Downton Abbey. It's a sector that could even provide opportunities for post-Brexit growth in Britain, as Brian Quinn now reports. A new trend is brewing in China. Tea houses serving British-style afternoon tea are proliferating across the Chinese mainland and Hong Kong, offering customers a taste of traditional English luxury amidst lavishly decorated Victorian salons. It's an unexpected import to the land where tea originated, 
The beverage has been a central element of Chinese culture for millennia, only coming to Britain in the 17th century. Now it's British culture driving exports in the opposite direction. Because the popular British dramas, TV dramas especially, in China, and then Chinese consumers really like and they are more exposed to British brand. So it's more than a tea itself, it's a lifestyle. The value of British tea exports to Hong Kong almost tripled over the first five months of 2016 and doubled for mainland China. The market still only makes up 7% of total tea exports for the UK, but the share is rising. For Taylors of Harrogate, a fourth generation tea maker in Northern England, sales have more than doubled every year for the past three years. China produces uh, nearly one half of the world's tea, so on the surface, you would think that there's a limited opportunity for Taylors of Harrogate. Our approach was to invest uh, time, resource, into understand Chinese consumer behavior, and we found that there are a number of Chinese consumers with high levels of discretionary income and demand for Taylors of Harrogate brands. Despite a recent slowing of the Chinese economy, Britain's tea makers are optimistic that the Chinese demand will remain strong. And that's it uh, from Stephen with the Business News. Thanks very much for now. Go and enjoy a lovely cup of tea now. I perhaps. shall. I hope you